This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1663, Meditation. Make it what you want it to be, a personal experience of meditation by Amy Palukowitz with ifitbringsyoujoy.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator, reading to you every day, including holidays. And I'll keep this intro nice and short, so let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Meditation, make it what you want it to be, a personal experience of meditation by Amy Palukowitz with ifitbringsyoujoy.com. Lately, I've been on edge, and not just, oh, I'm feeling a little funky, edge, more like, if one more thing irritates me today, I'm going to break something, edge. I've been trying to figure out what's going on with me, as I'm usually a pretty level person, and then it hit me. I haven't been meditating. Now, let me back up. When I was first really introduced to meditation, other than just hearing about it peripherally as something monks and Buddhists did, I was skeptical. I had a friend who meditated regularly. She took classes. She went on expensive meditation retreats for 10 days or more at a time. She had some sort of guru who was guiding these classes, focusing on pain and locating your, I don't know, malfunction in life, problems, past life pain. These sessions lasted for hours. There was a lot of crying, sobbing, weeping uncontrollably involved, always done in groups. We would go places and she would have to excuse herself to go meditate in a corner for five minutes if she hadn't practiced it that day. I thought, wow, that looks terrible. I'm never doing that. I will stay dysfunctional, thank you very much. All that being said, I've been a loyal yoga practitioner since I was introduced to it during a dance class in college. I love the feeling of getting through a class only to sit in Shavasana at the end, floating around in my thoughts but even knowing that the whole goal of yoga was to prepare your body for the meditation that occurs in Shavasana, I never equated that with meditating, mostly because I spent Shavasana thinking and I thought meditation was about clearing your mind. Not long ago, however, I found guided meditation, mostly thanks to the advent of the smartphone where there really is an app for everything. I stumbled upon a meditation app for weight loss and since it was free, decided to give it a go. Now, this particular meditation was around 45 minutes long, which meant that I would often fall asleep during the sessions. Not only that, but I couldn't commit 45 minutes every day to meditating. Not when I had work and exercising and auditioning and writing and cleaning and fill in the blank other things to accomplish every day. But here's the thing. I felt meditation starting to work. I noticed my relationship with food changing. Always being an emotional eater, I often turn to food in times of stress sorrow, or discomfort, but I found myself not feeling the need to do that as often. So I decided to try some other subjects. Insomnia, terrible, useless, paralyzing insomnia runs in my family and I did not escape. It doesn't happen all the time, but when a bout of insomnia hits, I won't sleep properly for months. I went searching and found a sleep meditation app, of course, and wouldn't you know it, the meditations worked. Not every night, of course, but between the breathing techniques, soothing voice of the narrator, and the sweet background sounds, my body would actually relax and rest. Fast forward a few years and podcasts rise in popularity. I devour them. Since I live in Los Angeles, the city that never sees the end of rush hour and work from home, I have a lot of space to fill. Then one day I think, hmm, I wonder if there are any meditation podcasts. And sure enough, I strike gold. There are tons of them. Not only are there a plethora to choose from, most of the sessions are between four and 20 minutes long, focusing on everything from starting your day off right to dealing with anger to manifesting abundance. So the next time I have a bit of time, I decide to try one. And like magic, I spend about 17 minutes floating around in a semi-conscious state, afterwards feeling deliciously relaxed and invigorated. As I explored these podcasts, I found several dedicated to starting your day off on a positive note. Sure enough, after a few days of waking up with these sessions, I could feel a difference in my day. Little things didn't bother me as much. I didn't feel so much pressure from every little task I needed to complete. I could sleep. Things that seemed small, but to me felt nothing short of small miracles. There are things that I came to understand through my learning process with meditation. Number one, it doesn't have to be painful. It can be, but it doesn't have to. You could choose nothing but happiness meditations for the rest of your life if that's what you wanted. Number two, it doesn't have to be done in groups. I love my alone time. 
Needing to be with a group of people to experience catharsis is not my cup of tea, and it doesn't have to be. Number three, you don't have to be focused all the time. Most of the audio I listened to touched on the tendency that thoughts have to wander and stress that it's okay. They gently remind you and guide you back periodically throughout the session. Bottom line on meditation. I think meditation can be whatever you want it to be. If you long for sessions with a guru who guides you and delves into your spiritual pain, that's out there. But if you want something a bit less intense, that can be beneficial as well. I'm happy to have found my path in the meditation world, and I'm certain that if I can do it, anyone can. You just listened to the post titled, Meditation, Make It What You Want It To Be, A Personal Experience of Meditation by Amy Palukowitz with ifitbringsyoujoy.com. And thank you to Amy, she's a guest author on ifitbringsyoujoy.com. She completely described the purpose of this podcast how you can have a daily dose of positivity that has an impact over time. I never really knew how much it would affect people hearing these messages daily until I started seeing messages from kind and happy listeners saying what a difference it made, which always makes my day. But back to the article, I completely agree. As someone who has meditated for hundreds of hours, if not over a thousand in like formal seated meditation practice, It shouldn't be painful, or at least not always. I do believe there's value in a formal basic seated meditation, and that can be painful. But as she mentioned, there are so many different kinds, and guided meditations are a really great way to start. And I have to mention back on January 19th, I walked listeners through a meditation myself on the Meditation Minis podcast, so you might enjoy that. Again, that's the January 19th, 2020 episode. I'll leave it there for today. Hope you're having a great day, and I'll be back tomorrow as usual where your optimal life awaits.